Hey Canada, I was wondering if you'd like to do a shout out on YouTube for pig vomit there. Number three, I'm editing you out. Today we're going to do a radio related video. So I got a weird one here today. I got a white LED on this box that I made here, I don't know, six, seven, eight months ago. I don't even know how long it's been. It's just been a blur. A white LED that just keeps pulsing and flickering. It just started up yesterday. Before I prime up for the uh, CB Marathon here today, which I can tell it's going to be, and then hand out white coats to uh, all the uh, clinically insane people out there that are on the radio. And this is the bitch of it, is getting this thing out to work on it. And it's a real bona fide pain in the ass. So this is my little driver box here I did some time ago. This thing works like a damn champ. It's probably the best thing I ever made that allows a radio like this unit in Madison here to come up in power to a level that's capable of driving something bigger where the radio itself just simply wouldn't do it even by putting a MOSFET in here and redoing a whole boatload of shit 25 watts was it and you know you can stick a single pill in there and do all this and that include shit in and it's not something that I would want to do because it's just not like a quality piece when you include something like that in there. But anyway, this will allow me to drive a 4 to an 8 pill with no problem. It's set up for a 4 pill now. So that's why it's cool and that's why I say it, it bridged the gap. Because it gets you unstuck from that less than 25 watt scenario. It's, uh, it's been extremely useful. This LED here is flickering. Sometimes it gets brighter and sometimes... Sometimes it feels like a nut, sometimes it don't. Now the blue one that's backing the white one up transitions fine. It's just the white one. I'll tell you what I think's going on here without even looking at anything. There's actually two possibilities. One would be an engineering problem, or two would be that the LED is simply a piece of shit. Now, I wouldn't be looking very good if I said to you, I think this is an engineering problem, because uh, the engineering worked beautiful for all this time. Generally, what I do when I design shit is I put a schematic inside. I want to be nice to myself. It's always good to do that. You just got to kind of make sure that you know, you don't put it anywhere where something can catch fire one day. And this schematic here is for this little board that's soldered on there. This switch here is this AM SSB switch. Now it's just two transistors working in a, a um, inverter. So when this guy here is on AM, it just pulls this base down shoots this up high um, this base is pulled up by that 3.3k there and this zener diode just acts like a breakover junction and the reason the zener is in there is because sometimes well not sometimes all the time the transistors don't completely saturate so if the transistor here isn't completely turned on this transistor here won't completely turn off so the Zener diode is just there to increase the amount of voltage that it takes to turn this transistor on here. So when this guy goes high, this guy goes low. When this guy goes low, this guy goes high. And when this is high, it just puts that LED in. This is all tied to VCC up here, which I think is like 6.5 volts or so. The only two possibilities are this LED is a piece of shit or this transistor is stuck in a state where it's kind of wigwagging just a little tiny bit in order for that led to dim this transistor would have to be slightly turned on in order for that to happen to pull this point down but i don't think that's the case now that white led is on this white wire right there so we should see something between two and three volts when that LED is on, right now it's on AM, when we go to SSB, 
it comes up to 2.487 and it's wigwagging around it's not stable now I know the voltage drop on these should be 2.548 from what I wrote on the bag and it's uh, it's a bit off that kind of tells me something there so let's make sure that this transistor is completely turning on and completely turning off it's a 4401 so that should be an EBC this is the base right there if I can keep from shorting the damn thing out so there is SSB and that transistor is off there's no voltage on the base it should go up to 600 and some millivolts and there there's nothing weird happening uh, it's throwing the transistor to one state or the other an on state or an off state that's very very solid so that tells me that this LED got a bad case of the <laughs> Tells me this LED got a bad case of the COVID or something. I think probably more to the point it's got a bad case of China. So the transistor is fully saturating right there because we're looking at the uh, the collector of this 2N4401 on AM. It should be completely turned on and when we flip it to SSB for the white light to come on it should uh, should toggle high. And it is toggling high, it's just not toggling as high as it should be. And I think the reason for that is because the junction inside the LED is, uh, <laughs> junction inside the LED is a bunch of shit. But this white wire comes over and goes right here. This is actually tied onto the leg of the uh, white LED. And then there's a blue wire right here, which is tied onto the leg of the blue LED that's backing up the white. So, uh, yeah. I gotta rip that some B out of there to get the white one out. I probably spent a half an hour bending that blue LED. So that's why it's a pain in the ass to take it off because now I'm gonna have to get it positioned exactly back on the back of the white one. The white one came out pretty easy. Don't ever glue those damn things in, man. I've seen people do that. That's just no good. LEDs typically, typically never go bad. At least, at least the LEDs that used to be made. So let's see what the voltage drop on here is. 2.5. It's kind of doing the same thing on here too. The light's cutting in and out. These are these lighthouse LEDs that I talked about in a video at one point in time. The reason I was so hell bent on these LEDs is because you can't find white ones. There's a lot of uh. LEDs that say that they're white, but they're really truly not. These are, but unfortunately they're uh, <laughs> probably from China. 2.564. It's not flop flopping around at all. It's solid on. Yeah, now i got to get that in there somehow. Man, I'm missing all the dysfunctionals today. So one thing I will say here is it's nice to put all Teflon wire on stuff when you build it. And the reason for that is because you can literally just shove a soldering iron right down into the middle of all that shit <laughs> and, and nothing melts off. That is the pros of Teflon wire. And there's a lot of wires up front here, unfortunately. 45 minutes later. That's crazy. I wanted to check these resistors here. These things are doing phenomenally well. There is no sign or burn in on these resistors whatsoever. And that's what I was kind of worried about. Whether or not they would burn in over some period of time and try to shift value or something but no they're they look brand new so the heat never even hit them this was kind of experimental with me here and using this uh, Wakefield what I call chewing gum 
and putting the resistors down on a heat sink uh, where the chewing gum kind of conforms to the resistor so thus it transfers heat better I seem to hit a home run on that ordeal we got her all fixed up here we'll see how long this LED lasts just don't understand why that thing went went bad like it did but it is what it is I got a whole bag of them I appreciate you taking the time today to watch my video I know it was just kind of a little piddling thing but uh, we do appreciate it you take care and uh, have a nice day